G'day guys, Chris from Core Electronics with you again. Today I've got a PySense from PyCom and I'd like to show you what it's doing. If you look on the bench with me now, I've got a white pie mounted on the PySense and it's reading temperature and humidity values and displaying them here on my phone. And if you come over to the screen with me, you'll see that not only are we displaying the temperature and humidity on Adafruit IO, which I can get to from anywhere, but on the left side here, you can also see light values being displayed in blue and red light, which is what the sensor gives us there. So how about I show you how we put this thing together? So, first of all, we need to have a look at our hardware. On the above camera, hopefully you can see me here. I've got a Wi-Pi sitting on my Pi Sense. I'm just gonna remove that for a moment. Now, under here, we've got, I'll just go through the sensors quickly. In the center here is the 3D accelerometer. Uh, on the side here, we have the light sensor and temperature and humidity sensor and a barometric pressure sensor. Now the accelerometer we've done on the PyTrack video and that code works just the same on PySense, they have the same accelerometer. So uh, all we're gonna do today is have a look at the sample code available from PyCom that gives you all the PySense outputs and we'll move from the sample code to what I'm running here at the moment, pushing some data out to Adafruit IO and showing some data on the screen. All right, so let's go over to the PC. I'm just gonna snap this back together as I do that. Better get it the right way around. Would not be good if I didn't. Plug that back in. All right. Now on the PC here, I'll just go away from the code that I'm showing at the moment and show you that in the browser, this is the tutorial documentation for what I'm going through at the moment. If you want to take your time and do this slowly, it's all documented here. I mainly want to take you to the uh, where is it now? Okay, down under the code heading, I have a code here, uh, sorry, a, a heading here, uh, and then a link to sample code. If I right click on that and open that in a new tab, I've already done that. So here's my new tab. So I won't go into what GitHub is or how it works. You really don't need to know anything other than this is where PyCom releases all of its code for us to download and experiment with. And the whole thing is packaged up as one thing. On the right hand side of the page here, you can see the green download, uh, clone or download button. I'm just gonna hit that. And then the download zip file option comes up. So I'm gonna download that. And by default, let's just leave it in downloads. So look at that, I've got two of them now because I've already downloaded that before obviously. So just right click on the file and extract it all. That's what I did. And then if we go in through the folders that are created, is PyCom Libraries Master. And then within that, we have the same named folder again. And then once inside that, we have what, seven folders there. And the second last one there is PySense. So this looks like a, uh, a project we can use straight away with Atom. So we'll do that. Uh, I haven't covered how to install Atom or the PyMaker plugin for Atom. That's all part of our internet of things from scratch, which is linked in the documentation. So I'm just gonna assume you have um, Atom IDE and PyMaker plugin already installed. So what I'm going to do is just open the folder that's in the download files. Let's go across to downloads, working my way in through the folders again. Once I get inside the PySense folder, I'm just gonna select that as our folder. All right, so now we have another Atom window. I'm just gonna put that on top of the other one. And as is usual with PyCom devices, boot.py is the file that each device looks for when it boots up. And if it finds it, it runs it once. Uh, and then the main.py file is the one that it runs after that. So let's have a, have a look here. I'll open up the library. These are the add-ons that have been included with this project from PyCom. And if we go straight into main.py, there's all of the code. It's uh, it's all there, there's no scroll bar, that's the entire code. So we'll just have a quick run through that. Uh, at, the at the top here we have five import statements. 
these import statements, apart from the first one, look a bit odd, you know, LI something, 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 because they're all named after the actual integrated circuit that's soldered there onto the Pi, uh, PySense. So yeah, there's some odd names there, but you'll start to see what they do. The next five lines down from there, we're setting up objects in memory that load those libraries and can now interact with the hardware. And you see where these short two letter names start to be implemented just below that. So we can see in line 15, mp.temperature. That's pretty simple. So include a file, create an object. There's a little uh, two-step process there where we create a PySense object and then we pass the PySense object to the other library so they know how to connect through the board to get to the chip. So we're printing the temperature there and then next below that we're printing the altitude. And the barometric pressure sensor on the board has two functions and you can see them both here. The first time MP is created, it has mode equals altitude on the end of it. And the second time here, we create another object called MPP, which has mode equals pressure. So it's possible to use the barometric pressure sensor, both as an altimeter and a raw pressure output. So that's what that first block of code is doing, temperature and pressure. Then below that, there's some more lines there for temperature and dew point. Um, I don't quite understand how the uh, humidity is calculated, but uh, in my application, I've taken the measured temperature and added that in here so that on the end of the line, I'll just scroll a little bit to the right there. si.humid underscore ambient requires a parameter, which is the temperature. So I've just sent in the temperature in my code uh, by default. This T ambient, according to PyCom, has been set at 24.4 degrees. I don't know why that is exactly. Okay, the light sensor gives us two channels. We have a blue lux and a red lux output. So when we read lt.light bracket bracket, that function returns a, I was going to say a duplex, that's not correct, um, a tuple, which is two values. So we can actually assign two values. We can say red comma blue equals lt.light bracket bracket, and it will populate both of those values. As I've uh, mentioned before, in the previous um, PyTrack getting started video, we had a look at the roll, pitch, and acceleration and modeled those in 3D on the screen. So if you wanna see how that works, that's there. The battery voltage um, seems to report the line voltage uh, on the board because I don't have a battery attached. And when we do run this code, it'll show that there's a voltage measured there, but uh, it's not for the battery. So the only thing I need to do now is check that I've got the right serial port. So there we go, found COM11, go into project settings, and COM10 has been added by default, so I'm gonna change that to COM11 and save that file. And what actually happens to me most times at this point is when I say connect, it connects to the wrong COM port number, but it seems we're actually connected, that's good. So back to main.py, if we upload, we'll send all of those libraries that are in the lib folder up to the YPy. And the main, uh, main program here won't be able to run any of those files that are in the import statement at the top unless they've actually been loaded first. So because of the last project I've been doing, most of them are already there. PySense.py and main.py were the two that were added. So now we can just run and we have an error in import statement, cannot import PySense. And that's usually because it hasn't given me the full message. Hmm. Normally it says that PySense is trying to import PyCoProc. So here it is at the top of the PySense.py file. So back in the bottom right-hand corner of screen, I'm going into the uh, back to PyCom libraries master uh, let me think, it's in here somewhere. It's not in there. Ah, the lib folder in the middle, right. So in the lib folder, there's a pycoproc folder and we need to grab pycoproc.py, copy that, jump back into the folder that we're using and put it in the library folder. So I'll paste that in there. And now we can do another upload. And you should see just that one file being added. And we definitely don't want to run pysense.py. We want to make sure we go back to our main program file. And there we go. 
everything is started automatically because the code is in main.py. So all of what is coming out down here, except for the top three lines, is actual measured data that's coming from the device. So there we go, the MPL3115A2 has measured temperature at 30.25 degrees. Woo, I thought it was hot in here. Somehow I'm underground, the altitude there is minus 15. I would think that you have to uh, zero the barometer to get ground level, and then you can use air pressure to estimate altitude. So it makes sense that that's not calibrated and not making much sense. Uh, air pressure is 101.5 millibar, I think at the moment. Or is that deci somethings? And we have uh, temperature and relative humidity there. Below that we have a dew point calculation of 20 degrees and ambient humidity 78. So that's pretty sticky. And we have a blue and red lux of light available there at 240 and 116. There's the accelerometer roll and pitch as well as the battery voltage at the bottom. So 4.65 volts being seen on the board at the moment, but doesn't make a lot of sense to me if the battery is not connected. All right, so how do we get from this state at the moment where we just have uh, the sample code and we wanna get to what I showed first where Adafruit IO is integrated and we can see a graph and also we can see the temperature data, uh, sorry, not, not the temperature data, the light data, the red and blue uh, coming off the device. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cheat a little bit and say you really need to go and have a look at the tutorial because the final code file is there and getting through to it is a little bit uh, time consuming and not very interesting. The main thing I would recommend for you though is as you try to put those two projects together, you end up with a long list of included libraries. So on the screen I'm reading there, lis2hh12.py, all of those files, I actually managed to fill up the memory, I assume, in the microcontroller, because I had too many included files. So I ended up removing the included files from the lib folder, which meant I had to take out the import lines from the program, <laughs> and I had to take out the objects that were created from those import lines. So we're dealing with just light and temperature and humidity, that worked fine. But when I tried to include all of the sensors data, for some reason, I got an upload fail at the end. Maybe too many files, maybe too much memory used. So I'll just go back again, have a look at the screen. I'll drop out, this is the example code from PyCom we have on the left. If I drop that off the screen, we're now back to the code that I originally ran. Apologies for scrolling up the entire file. And you can see here that the list of import files at the top here, these are the ones that I have used to contact Adafruit IO and package up my data as MQTT format. And the include files below that are the ones from the sample that came from PyCon. You can see the two that I've excluded there. So there are some extraneous lines here. I was sending random numbers in the previous example, but basically this is the, the setup. We need to connect to the Wi-Fi access point and everything AIO underscore is part of talking to Adafruit. You might find this last line a little strange. There's actually a dictionary object there that has two different feeds configured for Adafruit IO, one for temp and one for Humi. And on the right hand side of screen here, if I go over and have a look at my Adafruit IO configuration, I can go into feeds. Again, this has all been touched on in IoT from scratch. This is the list of feeds. I have one called humidity and one called temperature. If I open the humidity one and scroll to the bottom of the page, I can see what data has come into that feed over the past hour or so. So, if I really want to uh, drive the data wild, um, I can't really affect the temperature much because my body temperature is about the same as the room. And all I can really do is play with the humidity. So what I've done is put a graph onto a dashboard. If I go to my dashboards and then scroll to the bottom again and grab the conditions dashboard, here's the graph that we saw first. At the moment, it has no data because each time I open this page, it resets. And that's how I've configured it. So I'll start running the code again. Let's see what happens here. I've left the other. It's always the trick with having two code windows open. Disconnect one before you can connect the other. That makes total sense. Right, now we're connected. 
Now I want to run this sense.py, which is the main file. UMQTT is missing. All right. So why have I actually lost all my libraries for this? Am I in the right project? Yes, I am. UMQTT is there. Oh, of course, I have not uploaded. These are the regular uh, issues that you come upon. And if you are fighting a problem with your code that you just can't fix, it's usually, for me, something simple where I haven't uploaded the files. So there we go. We're pushing all the files onto the controller. The main.py file, there it is, it's empty. Sorry, boot.py is empty, main.py is empty. So in this case, I actually have to select the code file that I want run on the controller and run it. So I've configured the device so the LED changes color so that I know what's going on on the device. So red means it's connecting, orange means connected to Wi-Fi, green means connected to Adafruit IO. And here we go again, we've now got uh, light values coming out. If I put my hand over the device, you can see those light values have gone down from 230 and 111 down to 21, 10. Those are pretty small numbers. If I take my hand away again, you should see those numbers bounce back up. And the graph, it would be lovely if I could drive something interesting on the graph. All I'm going to do is pretend that my Wi-Pi is a microphone, and hold it right in front of my face and let it absorb all the humidity from my exhaled breath. And hopefully you'll see very quickly, there we go. The humidity part of my dashboard, my conditions dashboard is flying upwards. Obviously there's a limit to that. You can't make more than 100% humidity or even relative humidity. So if I put that back on the bench, the values will start to decline and head back towards what is the ambient value. So the final code for making those two things happen, displaying light values and uh, a dashboard showing humidity and temperature. Those are the final code files that are linked in the tutorial. All right, so I hope you've enjoyed that. This is a little preview on what you can do with the PySense. I'm gonna be doing another bigger project shortly, which will use LoRa Radio and we'll use the PySense as well. So as always, the documentation's below. Read along with it, take your time. Thank you, Chris signing off. <laughs>